Round number one, the category is creepy crawlies. Question one, what is the name of the venomous snake found in North America with a distinctive sound on its tail? Question two, what type of amphibian is an axolotl? Question three, what down under country are bearded dragons native to? Question four, what is the name of the insect known for its ability to produce a loud buzzing sound by rubbing its wings together? Question five, what is the term for the protective outer layer of an insect's body? Question six, what is the name of the insect known for its ability to produce light through bioluminescence? Question seven, what is a type of wingless parasite that feeds off the blood of humans and animals such as cats and dogs? And here are the round one answers. Question one, what is the name of the venomous snake found in North America with a distinctive sound on its tail? Rattlesnake. It is a rattlesnake, and they have little rattles in their tail. Their tail is almost like hard, and they like, have little beads in there, and it makes a... I don't know. Sound. And that warns you that they're there. Don't get too close, because they're poisonous. Question two. What type of amphibian is an axolotl? I don't know. An axolotl is a type of salamander. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. So cute axolotls with their little frilly things around their head. So cute. Question three. What down under country are bearded dragons native to? China? No, Japan. Bearded dragons are native to Australia. Good day, bearded dragons. That's what down under means. Usually when you say someone's down under, that means Australia. So oh. that was the hint. Question four. What is the name of the insect known for its ability to produce a loud buzzing sound by rubbing its wings together? Cicada? The answer is cricket. Crickets oh. rub their wings together and make a noise. Well, I, I like wings. the sound of crickets. Yeah, they're really cool. I don't know why. I I think the sound of crickets makes me think of like sleeping and summer and under the stars and camping, even though I don't camp very much. But question five, what is the term for the protective outer layer of an insect's body? Their exoskeleton. Their exoskeleton. That is correct. Question six. What is the name of the insect known for its ability to produce light through bioluminescence? Well, lightning bug or however you want to say it. Firefly or lightning bug. That is correct. So during the summer, there's all kinds of lightning bugs in our yards. And so the neighborhood kids run around with jars and collect them. And they, it's so fun. It's so, it's such like a summary. Yeah. Classic summary thing to do. I love it when you guys catch them. Question seven, what is a type of wingless parasite that feeds off the blood of humans and animals such as dogs and cats? Tick. I, yeah, ticks or fleas. So a flea bite is gets red and swollen and is really, really itchy, which is why dogs and cats get like real itchy when they have fleas. And a tick 
will stick on your skin. Like if you get a tick on you or a dog or a cat does, it will stick to your skin and suck your blood and it blows up like a tiny little blood balloon. They are gross. Yucky. That does not sound very pleasant. Round two. The category is transportation. Question one. What is the term for the vehicle that is used for carrying passengers or vehicles over rivers and other bodies of water? Question two. Which animal was historically used as a mode of transportation in many parts of the world? Question three. Steam, diesel, and electricity are the most common ways of powering what type of transportation? Question four, what is the name of the device at the end of a motor that is used to move boats through the water? Question five, what is the name of the vehicle that is used for transporting goods by air? Question six, a rudder is used to steer what kind of vehicle? Question seven, what is a powered industrial truck used to lift and move materials over short distances, often found in warehouses? And now the answers to round number two, question one. What is the term for the vehicle that is used for carrying passengers or vehicles over rivers and other bodies of water? A ferry. Have you heard of a ferry? Yeah. Yeah. I think that it could also been a barge too. Probably barges could probably. I was going to say like a cargo, a cargo ship or something. Yeah, cargo ship could work too. That could carry oh. people in. Yeah, like I'd give you that. Ship. Sure, perfect. <laughs> Question two: Which animal was historically used as a mode of transportation in many parts of the world? Horse. Horse is correct. I would also give you credit for camel or donkey or there's probably other animals used in transportation. Can you... Question three, steam, diesel, and electricity are the most common ways of powering what type of transportation? Cars? Trains. You, I don't think oh. there are any steam cars. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe back in the day there was a steam car, but... Trains is the answer. Question four. What is the name of the device at the end of a motor that is used to move boats through water? A propeller? Yes, a propeller. That thing that spins around on the bottom of a boat motor. Question five. What is the name of the vehicle that is used for transporting goods by air? Airplane or helicopter? I'm going for a cargo plane. So you said a cargo ship, and this one's cargo plane. <laughs> Question six. A rudder is used to steer what kind of vehicle? Boat. Yep, a boat or a ship. A rudder is that thing on the bottom that turns. Yeah, like, that's like, it's like it a kind of shark's fin. moves back and forth. To make the boat turn a certain way. It's kind of a like a rudder. Shark fin. Question seven. What is a powered industrial truck used to lift and move materials over short distances, often found in warehouses? Semi trucks? A forklift. 
You know, you've seen a forklift in a warehouse that goes and picks up the pallets of stuff and lifts it up, moves yeah. it over, and puts it on the shelf, and brings it down, does the thing. A right forklift. When you said, right when you said forklift, the first thing that came to my mind was the office. Oh, the office? Who drives the forklift in the office? Daryl. Daryl. Round number three, the category is the human body gross edition. Question one, our bodies make mucus to trap tiny particles of diseases and environmental irritants and keep them from traveling down into our lungs. When that mucus dries, what is it called? Question two, in a lifetime, the human body produces enough what? to fill 500 bathtubs. Question three, healthy people do what between 12 and 25 times a day? Question four, what is the scientific term for the buildup of dead skin cells on the scalp? Question five. Babies don't do what until they are at least one month old? Question six. What is made of mostly water, electrolytes, and waste products? Question seven. Spread across their lifetime, most people spend an average of one whole year sitting where? And now the round three answers. Question one, our bodies make mucus to trap tiny particles of diseases and environmental irritants and keep them from traveling down into our lungs. When that mucus dries, what is it called? A booger. Boogers, that is correct. So if you don't wanna eat diseases and environmental irritants, don't eat your boogers. Easy as that. Why didn't God make boogers taste worse? I, that's one thing I've never been able to figure out. We shouldn't eat our boogers. We shouldn't. Why don't they taste worse than they do? You ever thought about that? And also, how does your finger, how does everybody's finger fit into their nostril hole? You know, some guys have big fingers, but they have a nostril hole and it fits in there. Yeah, Ren is giving an example on the YouTube video right now if you want to see. Her nostrils fit into, or her fingers fit into her nostrils. So anyway, question two. In a lifetime, the human body produces enough what to fill 500 bathtubs? P. P? P? <laughs> the answer is said bathtubs, spit. I thought of water. Oh. Spit is the answer. 500 bathtubs full of spit. Wow. I just thought of P because... I don't know, bathtubs carry water and pee is like a liquid. So. I bet I bet it's more than 500 bathtub. Question three, healthy people do what between 12 and 25 times a day? Pass gas is the answer. Toot or pass gas 12 to 25 times a day. Gotcha. Normal, totally normal. Smelly, but normal. Question four. What is the scientific term for the buildup of dead skin cells on your scalp? Dandruff. Dandruff is correct. And sometimes it flakes off of your head and falls onto your shirts. And then you have white stuff on your shoulders. Please and then you have to use a Please dandruff say. shampoo to get rid of it. Question five. Babies don't do what until they're at least one month old? Babble talk. Cry actual tears. 
How interesting oh, is remember, that? I remember hearing that like on the internet where they just cry and no water comes out, but when but when they turn one month old, it's just like a, like a waterfall coming down from their <laughs> eyes. Yep. Though no real tears until they're one month old. That's crazy. Question six. What is made mostly of water, electrolytes, and waste products? Sewage. Pee or urine. If you do not urinate enough or hold your urine for too long, it can cause your kidneys to stop working. So it is not good to hold it in. Just go to the bathroom when you need to go. It's important. It's important to get all that stuff out of your body. Question seven. Spread across their lifetime, most people spend an average of one whole year sitting where? On the couch. On the the toilet. You spend a whole year in your lifetime sitting on the toilet. Isn't that crazy? I love that question. That's crazy. That is disgusting. Round number four. The category is English words with foreign origins. That basically means English words that come from words from other countries. Question one. What fruit's name comes from an Arabic word meaning yellow citrus fruit? Question two. Which popular condiment name is actually an Asian word? Question three. Which entertaining word is a Japanese word that means empty orchestra? Question four. What Arctic bird's name is derived from the Welsh language? Question six. What type of restaurant actually comes from the French word for coffee? Question six. What popular American food comes from the name of a German city? Question seven. What mode of transportation comes from the Swedish words motor and peddler? And now the answers to round number four. Question one. What fruit's name comes from an Arabic word meaning a yellow citrus fruit? Lemon? Correct. Lemon's name comes from the Arabic word layman, meaning yellow citrus fruit. Oh. Hmm. Question two. Which popular condiment name is actually an Asian word? Ketchup. Ketchup. Ketchup may seem as American as burgers and cookouts, but the word itself may come from a Cantonese word that means tomato sauce. Hmm. Who'd have thought? Which entertaining word is a Japanese word meaning empty orchestra? TV. Karaoke. Oh. Get it? It means empty orchestra in Japanese? Yeah. Because you're singing without a band or anything? Yeah. Makes sense once you think about it. Question four. What Arctic bird's name is derived from the Welsh language? I don't know. The answer is penguin. The name of this cute Arctic animal is derived from the Welsh language. Pen means head and gwyn means white. Penguin. Oh, I should have guessed that because I was thinking of the air. Like what flies in the mm. Arctic? And I was like, nothing. Nothing. Question five. What type of restaurant actually comes from the French word for coffee? Cafe. 
Yes, cafe. Very good. So if you're going to drink cafe in Paris and in America, you go to a cafe to have a burger and fries. <laughs> Question six. What popular American food comes from the name of a German city? Hamburger. This traditional American cookout food actually comes from the name of the German city Hamburg. Hamburg huh. hamburger. So, huh. question seven What mode of transportation comes from the Swedish words motor and peddler? Moped. <laughs> Round number five. The category is Disney princesses. Question one. Which Disney princess has a father named King Triton? Question two. What is the name of the Disney princess who is skilled in archery and wants to change her fate? Question three. In Beauty and the Beast, what does Belle trade her freedom for? Question four. What is the name of the Disney princess who is cursed to sleep for a hundred years? Question five. Which Disney princess disguises herself as a man to take her father's place in the army? Question six. What is the name of the kingdom ruled by Princess Jasmine's father in Aladdin? Question seven. What makes Flynn Rider come back to life at the end of the movie Tangled? And now the round five answers. Question one, which Disney princess has a father named King Triton? Ariel? That is correct. Ariel is the daughter of King Triton. Question two, what is the name of the Disney princess who is skilled in archery and wants to change her fate? Merida. Merida. She's from the movie? Oh, brave. Brave. That's right. Question three, in Beauty and the Beast, what does Belle trade her freedom for? For her father's freedom. Remember the beast oh, has him locked up and she says, right. like, if you let my father go free, you can have me. Remember? Right. I was I was like, did you miss say that? Aren't you talking about Ariel? And nope. I was like. <laughs> Question four. What is the name of the Disney princess who is cursed to sleep for 100 years? Sleeping Beauty. What is her name, though? Does it start with an A? Yes. Her name is Aurora. I had it. I was thinking of Amanda. Amanda was not it. <laughs> <laughs> Question five. Which Disney princess disguises herself as a man to take her father's place in the army? Mulan. Mulan is the answer, yes. Her dad is kind of old and not well, but he's the only man in the family, so he technically has to go to war. But and Mulan doesn't want him to because he's not. Yeah, so she pretends to be a man and goes in his she place. You go, girl. You go, yeah. Mulan. Question six. What is the name of the kingdom ruled by Princess Jasmine's father in Aladdin? It popped out of my brain. It it you were in Aladdin like a I know. I, 
The answer is Agraba. Oh, that's right. Ah, it like the I had a brain of fart. Agraba. Question seven. What makes Flynn Rider come back to life at the end of the movie Tangled? Her hair? No, because her hair gets cut off. Do you remember? Oh, that's right. Or oh, her tears? Rapunzel's tears. Yes. Because the mom cuts her hair off with that piece of glass and then it turns short and brown and then he gets stabbed and then she cries and then her tears fill Fall his body him. back with life and he's alive again. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you have heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these are the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. What country are bearded dragons native to? Australia. Question two. Babies don't do what until they're at least one month old? Cry actual tears. Question three. What is the name of the kingdom ruled by Princess Jasmine's father in Aladdin? Agrabah. Question four. What type of restaurant actually comes from the French word for coffee? Cafe. Question five. What is the scientific term for the buildup of dead skin cells on the scalp? Dandruff. Question six. What is a powered industrial truck used to lift and move materials over short distances, often found in warehouses? Forklifts. Question seven. What popular American food comes from the name of a German city? Hamburger. And here are your shout outs. English words with foreign origins comes from Alice and Oliver. Thank you, Alice and Oliver. Bearded dragons comes from Noel. Thank you, Noel. And Noel has a bearded dragon. Axolotls comes from Aston. Thank you, Aston. And Beckham and Savannah. Thank you, Beckham and Savannah. Potty comes from Eden. Thank you, Eden. <laughs> Human body comes from Kate. Thank you, Kate. Disney princesses comes from listener Maeve. Thank you, Maeve. Trains comes from Maverick. Thank you, Maverick. And here is your conversation starter, Ren. Tell me about the best and worst parts of your day. On regular days or on today? Regular days. Probably the worst, getting up in the morning and having to get up and go to school. And the best, nothing. Well, not, not everything's good, but like just like doing nothing, just like sitting there and just like. When you can just chill and not have sleeping. any responsibilities or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. I understand. Those are good answers. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank have you. a great week. You have you a great too. week. You too, Ren.